Hello again and welcome back to Tiny House and Off-Grid Resources. This is another episode in the story of my restoration of Brutus, the V8 Stage 1 Land Rover that I picked up using my mate's trailer here from up on the far north of New Zealand. And I dragged him home five hours and he's now sitting in my garden in the middle of a restoration. These are the nuts and bolts that I put into a solution of citric acid to clean the rust off them. These are the nuts and bolts that held all of the front end panels onto the vehicle and they were quite severely corroded. So they've been soaking for two days in a solution of citric acid, which is something you'll find in the supermarket. It's quite safe to use. It's a little bit slow for cleaning rust, but as I say, it is safe. Coming up very soon in another video, I'm going to be showing you how you can do your own electroplating at home. You can plate metal parts with copper, nickel, zinc, and it's all quite easy. But that'll be the subject of another video. These ones, after they've been dried and put into a fresh container, I'm going to give them a blast of fisherline. Now fish oil is something that's been used for preserving metal parts for a long time. It goes on as a liquid and it forms a soft translucent skin over the metal that allows nuts to move up and down threads quite freely but it will give extended rust protection to bare metal parts when they're left outside in the environment. I buy this stuff from the local automotive store and uh, I buy it in cans of six at a time because I do quite get through the stuff. This is what I actually spray inside Land Rover chassis rails to protect the inside of chassis. And I also use it to uh, protect, as, I say, as I'm showing you here, nuts and bolts and any bare metal parts that uh, will be exposed and can't be painted for one reason or another. Today's video gives me a chance to show you the best way of doing rust repairs and that is by completely removing the rusty section of steel. It's not much good at all putting a patch over rust. You must remove the rust because hey it's like a cancer. You cut it out and then you get a fresh piece of steel and you don't lap weld it in you butt weld it you put the edge of the fresh steel up to the edge of the old steel with no overlap and you seam weld the entire way around the reason this section here has rusted is because it's double skinned on the inside and water's crept between the two plates i've completely removed both plates and here i am setting up the skin for the outside and then I'll do the skin on the inside. Skipping now to uh, something that I was doing a couple of days ago trying to remove the big thermo radiator fan. It requires a special tool which I didn't have so I've used a pair of vice grips and a piece of pipe to brace it against the chassis rail while I use a mighty big hammer and a big spanner to try and undo it and it's not working. It's a job I'm going to have to come back to when I've got some heat. But you can see the bulkhead footwells on the left there. You can see how they were after I took the guards off before I did any cleaning. You can see those uh, rust holes. They're not as big as some that I've seen on other Land Rovers, but uh, they can't be left. It's got to be done properly. Well, after five minutes of ineffective bashing, crashing, levering, and pushing, I think it's time to put these tools down and show you a little bit more about the proper way to do structural rust repairs. So here you go. As you'll see, I've seam welded the entire patch. I've still got patches on the left that are requiring to be done, but this main patch, the outside's done, and I'm just 
tickling up the welds to make it look pretty. And then I'll go to work on the inside, putting in that double skinning piece, which gives the stiffness to where the pedals operate. Now you can see that by first using a grinding wheel to knock the welds back flush, and then using a flap sanding disc to polish in the two pieces of metal together, the weld almost disappears, and it will take a trained eye to tell that these rust repairs have been done. It will look to the casual observer like a genuine panel. I've taken care to replicate those three swages in the footwell. Uh, the rust had extended into those and I had to just form the edge of my patch to take in the curve of two of those swages. So they'll be finished off with a hammer now that I've welded the two bits apart, but where the weld goes over it, I'm just dressing that up right now to make it look real pretty. Now because I'm working outside, I spray my repairs with CRC rust converter, and that puts this black sheen over the good steel, and just stops any light rusting while it's sitting for a few days unprotected. So here I am just feeling for flushness around my next patch. I want to make sure that it's aligned perfectly. And what I'll do is just catch a couple of corners with tacks. And then I might give it a tap with a hammer or a push with a hammer handle just to get it sitting in exactly the right spot. Often I'll use small magnets in behind while I'm tacking just to hold the two pieces exactly where they need to be and then pull the magnet out before I do the full welding because heat is one of the things that stuffs magnets. If you get a magnet hot it vastly reduces its um, efficiency. So here I am just pushing out a corner feeling that it's absolutely flush with the parent metal and then I'll put a tiny tack in the corner And then I can move on to the next part. But I think I'll just seam, seam weld this one in completely. Before I move on to the side panel. So here we go. Weld across that seam. Because there's a wee gap, I'm not running a full weld. I'm doing it in spots, as you can see, so that it doesn't overheat and burn the edge away. I've got the amps turned up reasonably high because I do want full penetration. I need this to be welded on both sides. So the idea of pulse welding is that you get a really hot patch that melts right the way through, but then you wait for just half a second for that redness to go away, and then you do the next one. The appearance is of a full weld, but what it's doing is just going hot, cool, hot, cool, hot, cool, all the way along, so that you don't burn through on an edge. Another trick that I'll do to save it burning through on edges is I'll get a piece of aluminium flat bar and clamp that in behind, and that will pull the excess heat out and into the aluminium, and the great thing about aluminium is it won't weld to metal, so you can get good penetration right the way through. The aluminium pulls away the excess heat to stop the edges burning away and leaving a hole, but the aluminium will not stick to the steel. As soon as you undo the clamp, the aluminium drops away, but don't pick it up because it's always really, really hot, because the aluminium has pulled out the excess heat from the steel. So pick it up with some pliers and put it somewhere for the next one. So that's two things I've just shown you. Magnets and pieces of aluminium in behind and oh, three things. Pulse welding as well. There you go. So here I am again, pul pulse welding across the bottom. On a horizontal weld it's more important. On a downhill weld it seems to fall into itself and not drop away. So when you're welding down a panel, you don't weld up 
you weld down and any excess heated metal seems to slightly fall ahead of you and contributes to the weld rather than blowing a hole. Right, so there we go, two more centimetres to go and we'll call that done. Disc it all off, clean it all up, make it look as pretty as the last one and I can start on the side. Typically I'll spend about four hours on a footwell that needs minor repairs like this. It would um, probably take about the same amount of time to weld in a complete new footwell but those footwells have to come out from England and that takes time and I do enjoy the satisfaction of bringing something back to life without spending too much money on it so I'd rather spend my time than somebody's money and extra resources and shipping and all of that stuff that goes with buying new parts I'm a huge fan of making do with what I've got those of you who've been watching my videos for a while will have seen this whether it's irrigation or composting toilets or cooking or repairing vehicles or working in the garden I'm a big fan of saving resources Now this is that little magnet that I like to use to hold pieces in place while I tack them. And here's the finished job. That piece, that lip that sticks up, was all crumbled away and dissolved. So I've cut the damaged piece out, made a doubled up new section, tacked it in using the magnet to hold it in place, and then a full seam weld on both sides. And by the time that's painted, nobody will know I was even in there. Hey, I do hope that you enjoy these money-saving, do-it-yourself, vehicle-fixing, off-grid lifestyle hacks, tips and tricks, because it's something I really enjoy sharing with you. So if you do, make sure you subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.